No two guys. <laughs> I mean that crack right there, that fucking block is broke, look. Welcome back viewers. Uh, anyway, so we have the wheel bearings and seal for the Toyota pickup. They came in for the hubs. We got the Koyo bearings, all right? Here's the part number for your outer bearing, which is here. It comes with the bearing in the race, all right? Made in Japan. We have our Hub seal, the grease seal. Notice we have a spring on the inside. And it comes with this bearing here, part number as follow. All right, made in Japan. Good quality stuff here. And here's your inner bearing. All right, made in Japan. So our next task is to drive out the old races of the hub so follow me along as we get into that video on removing the bearing races from the hub now with that being said we have the Haynes manual up here and when we were looking in the Haynes manual Basically, what it said is to go to a machine shop and have the races removed. Well, we're not going to a machine shop just to remove some bearing races. So follow along and I'll show you how to install the races, seat them, then it also shows us how to do the the uh, the friction test, the drag, and how to do bearing preload. All right, so follow us along, and we will show you how to get through without any of those tools. All right, all right, guys, welcome back. All right, as you can see, we went ahead and marked the hubs with a right for passenger side, L for left side, driver side. So we don't get the hub screwed up. But 
Uh, with that being said, you can just put the hub on either side. Hey, I like to put things back where I got them so you don't run into any problems. So what we're gonna need is a good size punch, all right? And you're gonna look down inside here and you're gonna see a couple, four chamfered areas, all right? And we're gonna want to put the punch into those chamfered areas, all right? As you can kind of tell already that I've drove this race out a little bit, all right? So and what, or what we're doing right now is driving out the inner race, bearing race, right here on the top, that's your outer race. And we'll flip the hub over and we'll knock it out. So we got a suitable li uh, lifting device or staying device here is two pieces of two by 10, all right? To hold this into place, get the hub off so we can knock the race right out, all right? So what we'll do, we'll go ahead and knock that out and we'll see if we can capture that on film. All right, guys, so there it is. We have it knocked out, all right? It was that simple. And you can see the grease on the race where the square pattern is, where you can get inside there with your punch and actually access, okay, inside. So that's the only four spots you'll be able to hit a punch when removing the bearing race. All right guys, so what we wanna do next is we wanna remove the outer bearing race. And what we're gonna do, we're gonna flip it over and we're gonna There we go, we got that steadied now. So, as you can look down in the hole, you see the four recess areas for the inner race. Now we're gonna go inside here with the punch and just punch out these four areas. Okay, and we'll hit that with the hammer and knock them out. All right, very, very simple. Make sure you guys are wearing leather gloves, safety glasses. You don't want to put any pieces of steel from the hammer. I've got a brass hammer. A brass, uh, the only way you get that out of your eyeball is by scraping it, pulling it out. So with steel, they can use high power magnets and pull it out. But if you get brass in your hammer, in your eye from your hammer, you will go to the ER and they will scrape it out and it's gonna be 10 times worse than when it went in to get it removed. So be mindful of that. Uh, always remember that safety is paramount. Uh, you were born with two eyes, if you were, and you only get it to one set and that's it. Um, so take care of them, all right? We'll carry on. All right, guys, so we have successfully removed the outer bearing. As you can see, this outer bearing has Japan on side it, right? And it's N N NSK bearing. But what you can see inside this race, he's got some wear inside here, okay? It's discolored. When I removed this bearing, it had a Timken bearing installed into it. At some point, somebody removed the NSK Japanese bearing and installed a Timken bearing, exactly what you're not supposed to do. But obviously somebody did what they had to do to get it on the road. They're being cheap, but as you can see, the wear that's inside the race is discolored, all right? 
and the bearing had a lot more discolorment too when we took that off all right so this is what it looks like inside the hub you can spend all the time cleaning it out if you like just make sure it's clean free of foreign debris so that trash doesn't get into your new set of bearings and cause premature wear on your new set of bearings all right and we'll continue to carry on all right guys so we're ready to drop the new race in to the wheel hub you can see we got the old race here what we can do to start it is we'll lay the old hub on top of the new hub just to use that as something to beat the new race into the hub um, then once we get it set in there a little bit we don't want to get this stuck into the hub as well we can come back with a punch and punch around the top if we had a piece of pipe or we got crafty and welded a piece of steel across the old race we could use it as a bearing install or tool all right but i don't have a welder so we're going to go around that idea okay if we had a press we'd just press it straight in all right guys so you get the new race installed tap 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 all the way around it if you have a socket that will go around that, the diameter of the race use that or use a a bearing installer uh, sometimes you can use the old bearing grind it down the sides set it on top of it and just tap on top of it to get it to seat down inside um, that works but if you can't if you kept on driving this in then you'd have this race stuck in, stuck in there so you could take this over to the bench grinder grind it down so if you do it does go inside it won't get stuck so if you're crafty like that go ahead and do that but as of right now we went ahead and already installed the new outer race that faces the lug nuts okay so the next thing we're going to do is go ahead and flip it over all right uh, we'll obviously clean this out some then we'll grab the the new bearing and We'll grab the new bearing and we'll go ahead and install that and then above that we'll install the seal which will be the last thing then we'll pack all this full of grease uh, we'll go through the procedures how to grease all the bearings uh, after we in install the races so the first thing we want to do is just make sure we get all the races installed and you can look down inside here and you can see where the race uh, for the outer bearing race is met up with the hub you want to ensure everything is nice and flat and it's true if not just go ahead and work your punch around and try not to nick the edges of your uh, hub just like you don't want to tear up the edges of your race so I wouldn't necessarily try to use a steel punch, maybe a, a brass punch, but that's how you use steel. But if you know what you're doing, um, you can get away with it, but be mindful, you could actually cause more damage than you do good. So just be conscious that if it's this is a task that you can't do, then like I said, like the, the Haynes manual said, take it to the, to the machine shop, have them remove it, install them for you. So all you have to do is install the hub itself and you can go from there. All right, so now we went ahead and installed your inner race, okay? So what we'd wanna do now is go ahead and pack the bearing with grease. And basically you're, what you're gonna do is take grease, put it in your palm. Then once the grease is in your palm and you're just gonna run that bearing into the grease, um, and just push the grease into the bearing. And we're gonna put a lot of extra grease inside here to help keep this lubricated for um, the, the wheel hub, okay? So we'll pack some grease in there. But first thing we're gonna do, we're gonna uh, actually grease our bearings. So we'll get our, our bearing out. We'll get a handful of grease. We'll actually work. All right, 
the, the grease into, we'll put it in our palm and we'll just work it into the bearing and using a motion like so to get the grease pushed in through the sides. We'll come from a side to side motion and we'll actually just force all the grease into every, every crevice of this uh, tapered roller bearing. All right, now there are some tools you can get out of like the parts store, all right, to force the grease into it. And uh, I'll see if I have one and I can show you guys. All right, guys, I found this uh, bearing greaser tool. So it's just going to come down over top of the bearing like so. Um, and basically what it's, in, the intended purpose is to use the grease cert and force the grease into the bearing. All right, I don't know if it'll actually work for this uh, setup, but we'll give it a shot and see what happens. More likely we're just gonna make a mess and end up doing it by hand anyways. So go ahead and follow me along. I'll bring you back here after we get this all figured out. All right, guys, so what we're looking at here is we have a Proto Impact 1 and 7 16th socket that will fit exactly over the race, but it will not get stuck inside the hub. So let's go ahead and flip that over, and you can see it fits just inside there very well. This is a Proto Professional, made in USA, uh, six point socket that'll fit right over that outer race. Our inner bearing race, we're gonna use a 46 mil Bonnie impact socket, half inch drive, and it's gonna fit just inside of the race for the inner hub bearing. We'll flip this over. And as you can see, it fits just, just snugly inside. Not quite, it won't get stuck, but we ought to drive that race all the way down into that hub without an issue. Um, like I said, I'd recommend that you probably use these stockets by using a, um, a drift pin, but you could use either method, but use what method that's gonna work for you and be the safest for you. If you come down with even downward pressure, and you have a press and use a socket and ensure that you have it seated correctly, you, you'll probably be just fine. Like I said, you could come in here and just use the uh, drip pin in a punch and seat it correctly and just be fine. Just be used a lot of caution when you do that. You might have some issues when you start uh, running the uh, bearing race in where it's gonna to wanna to jump around with you and offset. So be mindful of that. Um, and it just takes experience uh, when you're driving those bearing races in. Uh, be mindful that you could damage the race and then you're gonna be back at square one starting all over again. So be mindful of that, guys. All right, guys, welcome back. We got the bearings installed, greased up, seals installed. The grease seal is installed as well. We just put an excessive amount of grease in the hub. and sure we had plenty and the bearings in there right now. So the next step is to get some pizza, right? So we got some fat sacks here. This is not a sponsor. Is this good? You go down to Puyallup, uh, Washington, and you can find fat sacks. All right, but I'll tell you what, I did the biggest joke ever going to O'Reilly's to get my brake rotors turned. The fat dude that was out there putting the battery in came in and he's like, who ordered the pizza? And there I was standing at the counter. And the guy was like, has anybody helped you? I was like, no, actually not. And I'd been there for about 10, 15 minutes. And he's like, what can I do for you? I was like, well, I need some rotors. He's like, looked at me all confused. He's like, what do you mean? And I flip open the box 
And there you have it. I needed some rotors turned. So I took my rotors into O'Reilly's down there in Bethel. And they went ahead and took care of me and turned them up. I mean, if it's good enough to get it going, I can always put new ones on later on. But for right now, it's better than what it was. So probably not the best job, but it's a lot better than what it was. Let's just put it like that. So we're going to get the the hub over the uh, the rotor. Then we're going to put the 14 millimeter bolts in. All right. And we're going to make sure we have the lock washer as well. We need to go back into the manual, which is located over here to see exactly what the torque spec is on that. We're just going to drive them in slowly and then we'll go ahead and seat everything down with the torque wrench. Okay. All right, guys, so right now we have all five bolts started. Like I said, you may need a hammer just to kind of tap the, down the, the hub onto the rotor. And you want to make sure it's flush, okay? Make sure it's flush even all the way across. The next thing we're going to do is take the 14 mil, 3 8 drive. All right, 3 8 drive, 14 mil. This is a Blackhawk brand. You know, it's just some of my old Blackhawk sockets I got. And uh, we're going to go ahead and zip these guys down. Okay, we got the Ingersoll Rand 3 8 drive ta uh, titanium. All right, make sure you got the safety glasses on and the earplugs, right? So we just want to run it down a little bit. Then we're going to go the cross pattern so we'll go up here okay come back down all right go up here all right now we're going to come over here to the last one all right we just this is a light install right now. Um, I gotta go over to the book and find what the torque spec is. Then we'll go ahead and get the torque wrench out. We'll torque it to spec to ensure we have a proper um, mating surface between the hub and the brake rotor, all right? We don't wanna lose these five bolts while we're rolling down the road at any mile per hour, okay? So with that being said, Give me a second here to go find that uh, torque spec. All right, guys, so what we're looking for is the brake disc to front axle hub. We have two wheel drive, 1990 Toyota pickup. And what it says that we need to be at 40 to 54 foot pounds, all right? If we had the four wheel drive, it would be 29 to 39 foot pounds, all right, and so forth. Um, like I said, you always want to make sure you're checking your torque specs and you're running it up to where it needs to be. Okay. So give me one second. I'll go get the torque wrench and we'll go ahead and install this up to, um, 40 to, to 54 foot pounds. Uh, when we run it up to the, the, value torqued we're not going to go straight to that value we're going to go up in third so we're going to cut the number in half and we're going to basically run it up in third so we don't put a lot of stress on the bolts um so we don't snap them all right it's very imperative that you do that because if you go straight to the max number more likely you're going to snap the bolt then you're going to be up you know poop creek you know and you don't want to be up poop creek so Let's go ahead, go get the torque wrench and get that up to 40 to 54 foot pounds and we'll go from there. All right guys, so we now have the rotor installed into the vise. All right, we got it blocked up with some wood. All right, so we don't want to mar up the rotor any worse than it is. You know, it's a pretty original 1990 brick rotor. So, we got some wood in there. Uh, yeah, we had the bearings already in. Probably shouldn't know, but hey, 
we went ahead and put the bearings in, the seals installed on both the hubs. Uh, now, like I said, we're going to torque these five uh, bolts that hold the rotor on, all right? 40 to 54 foot pounds, all right? And we're gonna run them up in thirds, all right? So we'll go ahead and do that, and then we'll come back and we'll get it installed onto the Guys. spindle. So we got the hub on, grease is like coming out. We got the pizza box down to prevent any grease that will come in contact with the concrete. I don't want to be cleaning up a hazmat mess. And at the same time, I don't want to be getting all the grease on my tactical trousers from 511 because they're expensive. So we got the nut. All right, let's take a look at it. And you can kind of see it's got two sides. It's got a flat side and it's got more of a rounded side. All right. The rounded side is going to go out. The flat side is going to go in. All right. I'm just going to push that on. Start engaging the engaging threads. Like I said, you're just going to go ahead and just seat that in there, start engaging threads. And uh, what we're going to do, we'll come over here with a 30 millimeter socket and run it in. And we got to do like the preload on the, on the bearing. So uh, if you got questions about that, hey, you can go down there and comment below. Let me know if I'm doing something wrong or if you got a better way of doing it. Uh, we can get dial indicators and tension springs like the book says, but we can go ahead and bottom it out and just back it off slightly and we'll just check for the feel and the play in the rotor if there's any movement. All right, so we don't want a lot, but just enough. So we got to go ahead and get this seated correctly, then we'll get this nut put on. All right. All right. Thanks for watching. All right, guys. So you're going to take your ratchet. All right. You tighten it all the way down. Basically set that bearing where you can almost not uh, move your hub. Then you wanna crack the nut loose. Then just slightly tighten it down to where you got just a little bit of play and it moves freely. Then you're gonna go ahead and put your lock cap on there. Then we're gonna set our uh, cotter pin in and we put that cotter pin through and we're gonna wrap it all the way around so it doesn't contact with the grease cap, uh, the wheel cap. And, uh, and that's pretty much it. Uh, if you guys got any questions uh, about, you know, this procedure, it's pretty common. It's all over Facebook, uh, YouTube, you know, what have you. And there's plenty of manuals out there. But um, this is basically a way to do this without spending the money on getting the spring tool and the dial indicator and checking for run out. Um, is it the right way? Well, it's close enough, you know, but if you know what you're doing, you've been doing it for long enough, it's not necessary that you need to spend all the money and use the tools, but you know, knowledge is power. This at least gets you on the road. And if you over tighten it, you're going to do premature bear, uh, bearing wear and you could possibly warp the spindle and have to replace the spindle as well. Um, with that being said, I'm going to wrap up this video. Uh, thanks guys for watching and we'll see you next time.